Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a hard design problem from LeetCode, Design Movie Rental System. This one is less about a single clever algorithm and more about choosing the right data structures to handle several different tasks efficiently. We'll break down the requirements and build a system piece by piece. Let's get started. Okay, here's the full problem description. The main goal is to create a system for a movie rental company with a bunch of shops. We need to support four main actions, searching for available movies, renting them, dropping them off, and generating a report of the cheapest rented movies. So the heart of this problem is managing state. A movie can either be available in a shop or it can be rented out. We need to move movies between these two states. The tricky part is that both the search and report functions ask for the cheapest five. This is a big clue. It tells us we'll need our data to be sorted, or at least easily sortable, by price. Let's look at the two functions that involve sorting. Search is specific to one movie ID. It needs the five cheapest shops that have an unrented copy. Report is different. It's a global request. It wants the five cheapest movies that are currently rented, no matter which movie or shop they are. The sorting rules are also slightly different, which is a key detail. The other two functions, rent and drop, are what change the state of our system. When a customer rents a movie, we need to update our records to show it's no longer available. When they drop it off, it goes back into the available pool. These operations need to be fast, so we can't be doing slow full system scans every time someone rents a movie. Okay, let's start designing. We clearly need to separate our data into two buckets, what's available and what's rented. For the available or unrented movies, it makes sense to group them by movie ID. This will make the search function much faster. For the rented movies, we just need one big collection, since the report function looks at everything. Here's the plan. We'll use three main data structures. First, a dictionary we can call unrented. The keys will be the movie IDs, and the values will be a set of tuples, where each tuple contains the price and the shop. This lets us instantly find all available copies of a movie. Second, a single set called rented, satirite. This will hold tuples for every single movie currently out on rent. And third, a helper dictionary called prices. This will let us quickly find the price of a movie given its shop and ID, which we'll need for moving items between the unrented and rented sets. Now there's a small catch. Python sets are inherently unordered. But our search and report functions require sorted results. The simplest way to handle this is to take the items from our set, put them into a list, and then sort that list just when we need it. This is a classic simplicity versus performance trade-off. It's easy to code, but if we had millions of rented movies, sorting that list every time could become a bottleneck. For this problem, let's stick with this approach and see how it works. Okay, here is the complete Python code implementing that strategy. You can see our three data structures being initialized at the top. Then each function carries out the logic we just discussed. Let's quickly walk through each part. First, the initializer. We create our three data structures. Unrented is a default dict of sets which is just a convenient way to avoid checking if a movie key already exists before adding to it. We then loop through the initial entries. For each movie, we add it to the unrented dictionary and store its price in our prices lookup table. Pretty straightforward. Now for search and report. This is where the sorting happens. In search, we grab the set of available copies for the requested movie, convert it to a list, and sort it. In report, we do the same for the entire rented set. The really cool thing here is how Python sorts tuples. It automatically handles the tie-breaking for us. It compares by price first, then by shop, which is exactly what search needs. For report, it compares price, then shop, then movie, which is also perfect. Then we just slice the list to get the top five results. Finally, rent and drop. These are the state change functions. For rent, we first look up the movie's price using our handy prices dictionary. Then, we simply remove it from the unrented set and add it to the rented set. Drop does the exact opposite. It looks up the price, removes the movie from the rented set, and adds it back to the unrented set for that movie ID. Because we're using sets and dictionaries, these add and remove operations are very fast on average. So how efficient is our system? The initialization takes time proportional to the number of entries, which we can call E. The rent and drop operations are super fast, constant time on average thanks to using hash sets and dictionaries. The bottlenecks are search and report, because they have to sort. The time for search depends on how many unrented copies of a movie exist, and the time for report depends on the total number of rented movies in the system. The space we use is proportional to the total number of movie copies we're tracking. 
So to wrap up, this problem is a great example of system design. It's all about picking the right data structures to meet the needs of different functions. By thinking about what each function required, fast lookups here, sorted results there, we were able to build our solution. The key insight was to separate unrented and rented movies, and to use the natural sorting behavior of Python tuples to handle the complex sorting rules easily. While there are more advanced data structures that could avoid sorting every time, this approach is clear, correct, and often good enough. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more leap code easy, medium, or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Hope this leap code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. This channel doesn't make any money from sponsorships or ads yet, so if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.